Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to another episode of Island Spot Sports. And before we get to our guest today, we have a big shout out for, for Living Sisu. Living Sisu is a platform and app that wants to give you all the tools to have success in your sport. Their main objective is to activate your lifestyle. So for active, it's for active people. Enjoy discounts at, at companies like BioSteel, 30% off, Body Logics, The Goalie Guild, all his books are discounted. Roan, Lululemon for men. 20% off online stretching programs with eccentrics, one full month free. They got super silent massage guns, 20% off those. And it's a great quality. It's way less expensive than a Theragun. And it's a great, it's great quality. So there's so many more discounts that you guys will need to just become a member to see. So they want to provide you with anything you need for success. So come join the community. I'm a part of it. A bunch of other athletes are a part of it, so it's free to join. It takes 20 seconds to have to get exclusive offers to your sport, and it's definitely worth worth it. So, do do us a huge favor and go sign up for Living Sisu's membership. It's free, 20 takes 20 seconds, so go do it, and we'll see you there. Living Sisu is a great company. We uh we know one of the co-founders, Zach Fricali. He's a great guy. He uh. He's the co-founder, and he does a lot of live streams on Instagram at uh, at Living Sisu, and with a bunch of elite athletes. And you learn a lot from like the athletes' determination, the resiliency, everything to what me made them become successful. So it's been a great experience so far. So go on. I'm gonna leave uh, the link in the description. So uh, go sign up. Yo, welcome back to another episode of On The Spot Sports. I'm Jack, and we are joined by a very special guest, current defenseman Lawson McDonald. Lawson currently plays for plays Division Three hockey for University of Wisconsin Superior. He also played NCAA Division One hockey for University of Nebraska Omaha, along with trips in the MJHL for juniors. So, uh, welcome to the show, Lawson McDonald. Lawson, how are you? I'm doing great. Yeah, how are you doing? I'm doing good. After this interview, I got to get, go get a COVID test for school, though. So that's... Uh, oh, really? Yeah, that's going to be uh, interesting. I don't know how to feel yeah. about that. No kidding. Yeah, I won't be too bad. Just a little long stick up your nose, I guess. Might be uncomfortable for a bit. Yeah, it's not too bad, but it's just got to be done. So uh, how's training for you? Like, we're in these weird times right now. So, like, what have you been doing, like, training and all that and staying in shape? Yeah. Um. So at first, like, when it was super strict, it was way harder than it is now because I um, like when I got back, <clears throat> luckily I could, I have like some stuff at my house. So I could train, I could train there in my house, but obviously I didn't have a workout partner or like a trainer with me. So it was a lot more difficult than now though. I'm back in my normal spot ever since like halfway through June. Then I went to back with my trainer and everything was kind of normal from there. And the gym's not overly full, so it wasn't like we had a bunch of, um, like, it wasn't slow with the amount of people that had to work through each piece of equipment. It was kind of, it was kind of chill, and it worked out pretty well. So it wasn't like um, a huge difference as soon as that, um, that one rule changed, then it was kind of back to normal. So it hadn't been too bad. It was just, I didn't skate during the summer like I usually would have. Usually I skate in July a lot and August. And now since the season's being pushed back and college not even starting till November or January anyways, then it wasn't like a huge, um, huge deal for me to skate. So that's been different for me this summer for sure. Yeah, I've been doing the same thing like you. I'm hitting the home gym right now, even though the gyms are okay. open. I'm just my yeah. well. Might as well stay home. I got all the equipment here, so yeah, just stay home, save some money, and then yeah, I've been skating like three, four times a week just to stay in in hockey shape. So I'm mm -hmm. doing that. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's good. yeah, that's one thing. I, I've been like getting on the ice the odd time now just to keep the rust off from over the summer and stuff. But I haven't been with a, a skills coach or anything like that, so it's still fine though, as long as I'm you know, yes, like you said, staying in that hockey shape and not getting too rusty, then when I get back to school, it should be, things should be okay, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Once, uh, 
once quarantine hit and I got back on the ice after quarantine, I was, I was super rusty. Like I couldn't even oh. stay on the ice for like more than like, yeah, I don't even know how long and I'd be gas right from the start. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't. Not like, good for our, lungs. Our season ended in March sometime and then, uh, didn't skate until I think like end of June. And it was since I had, uh, like I had surgery at one point and then I was ob- obviously off the ice for a while then, but ever, uh, that was the, by far the longest I had ever gone without skating. And yeah, I just felt terrible. You just yeah. lose it all. It's weird. Yeah. You would think you'd keep it, but nope, you lose everything mm-hmm. and then you have to restart from scratch again. Yeah. Sucks. Yeah. And you also have a YouTube channel. So during quarantine, I'm sure you're pumping out videos and like I've been recently watching them and I, I really enjoy those videos. Like what goes into Thank you. making yeah. those uh, videos? Oh, kind of, first of all, it's an idea. I have to have like trying to get something that I can talk about. And like going back to the quarantine stuff, I was, I was bummed because I wanted to make a bunch of videos like at college with my friends and stuff and doing hockey stuff there. And then when quarantine and we all had to go back home, I was like, well, what the heck am I going to do now for, for these videos so it kind of forced me to think of other things I could do I guess that would just be with me involved so then I just kind of had to think of a bunch of brainstorm some ideas like what can I talk about and then that kind of led me just to okay well I can just talk about my experiences while I'm at home here during quarantine like that's something I can at least do it won't be interesting as me going to playing hockey or like doing a vlog or something but it's like it's something that I can, I guess, teach and just talk about. So that was kind of honestly like a good thing because I think a lot of guys like those videos when I was just doing like the difference between D1 and D3 and uh, how I how I got recruited and just all my experience videos. Like those kind of were, were decently popular. So probably wasn't a bad thing that I got forced to make those. Yeah, those videos were definitely fun to watch because – just you could learn a lot just from like your experience and like yeah some of the other guys experience you just, you just learn so much just from watching that yeah and I probably wouldn't have made those videos if I wasn't like if I didn't have to be in quarantine and stuff so yeah yeah hockey uh, the game the game footage is definitely definitely the most fun to watch but yeah exactly. you just learn you learn stuff either way from the experience yeah. videos mm-hmm. definitely yeah. 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 So let's get into uh, your junior hockey days. Start your junior career in the MJHL, the Manitoba Junior Hockey League for the Winkler Flyers. And you played like all four years there. So can you tell us about like your first season in Winkler and like what were some of your expectations going in? Yeah, the first season, um, it was uh, pretty difficult at, right off the get go. I, I think I played like five or 10 games. And then I, um, they had like this showcase. So the MJHL does a showcase and it's, it was, it used to be right off the bat of the year. And then I played like five or 10 games before that. And I broke my collarbone right in that showcase. First game of the showcase. I was all excited because that was like where the college scouts would come and whatever. And I'm young and that's all that kind of matters that, you know, it's all you're thinking about. But so I really wanted to play in it. And then I ended up breaking my collarbone had to sit out or actually had to end up getting surgery as well had to sit out for a few months only got to play my next game in like Christmas time so it was definitely like it was a super super slow start to the junior the junior hockey chapter but um, I guess my expectations were probably somewhat a little high for for being 16 in that league Um, It was still a lot of fun, but I think that I had to, it was a big stepping stone. Like you're playing against 20 year olds and definitely by far the biggest guys I've ever played against because I just came from midgets. So it was decently hard to, I guess, transition right away. And I wasn't a huge player, especially at 16. I was probably like 150 pounds or something. So it was, um, it was a harder transition, but I feel like each year just got easier and easier at that level. It just, everything was uh, just easier to adapt to after that. So. Yeah. So what were some of, some of like the process to like reheal your shoulder and like, 
gone through like surgery like what do you what do you have to do and like where was your mindset throughout all this um i didn't like <laughs> we didn't have like a team um physio like we didn't have a team this team that like it would have been in college so the process was pretty much whatever the the doctor had gave me some things to do just resting it for a long time and kind of slowly building up some strength with it I don't it was a long time ago too I don't even remember like hardly all the steps that that I went through with that so um yeah what was uh yeah my thought process I mean I just wanted to heal as quickly as I could so I could just get back and playing and get more games in I didn't want my first year to be like a 20 game season so luckily I I still uh when I got back since I, I had the metal plate in the shoulder too then it was just it was good to go I wasn't too uh, worried about breaking it again because it's pretty solid after all that yeah at least you uh healed up and were able to play again yeah that's always, that's always yeah. a good thing yeah it hasn't bothered me since so that's good yeah, that's good. So, uh, was junior hockey a big adjustment for you after, like, your surgery from, like, going from, like, AAA to uh, juniors, or do you find, like, that transition to be easier than you would expect? Probably not easier, no, than uh, – especially just for being smaller and playing against really older guys. And, like, MJ is a tougher league maybe than most. Um like it was there's was obviously fighting in it there was a lot of like there's like dirtier players I guess you could say so it wasn't um something I was used to for sure and it was a little bit of an intimidation factor to it too that because I'm not a fighter or whatnot so and when you're going against guys that are like when you think that, oh, you don't know when you're just going to get jumped or whatever, then that kind of comes into play too. So, yeah, I guess it was it was something different for sure. Yeah, so uh, then going into your second year of junior, you played 59 games, so you played pretty much every game. So, like, what was it like getting to play every game and uh, contributing to your team's success throughout the season? It was fun. Like, the, the junior schedule is busy and stuff, but – just being able to play all the time and you just kind of get into a rhythm of you're playing your night off, night on, like it just kind of keeps flowing and it doesn't seem as much as it is. I, I just remember like all the time right away is all of a sudden the first 20 games would be done. And then it's like, boom, halfway through the year is al already done. And it just, it just flies by. And I think, I don't remember exactly how we did our second year, but I just remember those years. Um, I feel like every year that I was on that team, we always, kind of did better and better and we we always got better so we won more games and then that just made everything way more fun just being able to contribute to a, a winning team so yeah it's always a lot it's always a lot more fun whenever whenever you're winning games so uh, oh so, yeah and it's way and better scoring getting some points it's all, always the best yeah time. yeah yeah so go yeah, actually, you, yeah yeah go ahead yeah well I remember like the second year the first year I didn't even have my driver's license either Ooh. So it was pretty annoying because I I went to school I went to school in Winkler still, but I had to get picked up by, like, because I'm from, I'm I live pretty close to Winkler, so I my family was here, but I still had to get picked up from my dad or picked up from my grandpa to, just to go to the rink every single day at twelve o'clock, and then I had to get dropped back off. So that was like it was just an annoying thing that I was had to, like. W it was just waiting or relying on people to bring me versus then the year after I finally got my license and then I was, I could just drive myself places and made it a little bit easier. Yeah. Whenever you get your license, it's a whole new ball game. Like you're, yeah. Oh, you're yeah. freer and you, you don't have to rely on people to pick you up and stuff. You just yeah. do it whenever you want. Yeah. 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 So heading into your third year, you came up with some awards. You got, you're named, you got the lead, you led the MJHL in assists by a defenseman with 35 assists. So what do you think helped contribute to that success and uh, get that award? Yeah, I think a big thing was, again, to that winning that we were a good team that year. Um, I think that was the year when um, we had 
the most wins or we tied the most wins maybe in our franchise history like we had a lot of a lot of wins so then when you're playing any night your your team's scoring goals and if you're on the ice like getting a decent amount of ice time like chances are when you're making a breakout pass you're shooting the puck on net like whatever it is like those and on the power play your top guys are going to be scoring so that's where for me it helped me get all those assists because I had super good forwards that were scoring goals and then it didn't make it difficult for a, a D-man just to put up some numbers when yeah when you're when your guys are scoring and you're winning games so I think that helped a lot and just building the confidence from the first year to the second year to the third year every year I just kind of got more confident and stuff and that was uh that's what also helped me just be a better defenseman yeah because your confidence show because then the following year you you won the same award getting 41 assists so your confidence is there and you guys were scoring and winning some games so that's uh that's always yeah. a good sign so like yeah, did, sure. did you did you uh like work harder during like the off season to like make sure you're like you're like t- red top top notch ready and like did, did you think that contributed to your success in getting so many assists? Yeah, I think um, I think my off seasons were always really big to how my actual season went. Um, I remember one of those years, I think it was before my – that year where I got the, the third year. It was that summer where I remember – it was probably one of my best summers still to this day. Then um, I I went to a new gym. I started going to a new gym, got a new, like had a new trainer. And it was, um, I went really hard there. And I went hard also with a skills coach that summer. And just was always, I was on the ice all the time, got a lot bigger and a lot stronger. And then I think that carried over well to just the next following season. And then I tried to keep that same mentality each summer. And I always feel when I have a good summer and I feel like I'm, putting in a lot of time in and that will transfer over to how I do the next season yeah it seems like whenever you get you have that like amazing like summer like yeah every, everything from there just goes just goes uphill yeah. from there and like your confidence is soaring like you're scoring it's, it's a nice feeling yeah what's your uh, favorite memory of being a Winkler flyer oh that's a good question there's a lot of them, oh, man. There's some, like, really funny stories. Um, I think, like, it just – I always when I think of, like, junior, it's – there's so many players that you play with and, like, good friends and memories that you have. It's just with, like, those guys, like, being on the bus or being in the hotel room, um, winning big games. I remember when we beat – we beat um, – Portage actually when they were like they had 17 wins and zero losses or something like that like they had a ridiculous record because they were they were really really good and they ended up winning the league obviously and then I remember we um we were like the first team to kick them off their like huge winning streak in their home rink so I remember that was like a huge win and I do I remember that game really really clearly um yeah just like those those certain little things like that there's a there's probably too many just to pick one specific thing but it's mostly just the teammates I had and the friends I made through the experience of junior hockey yeah that's awesome so after uh you're you're done being a Winkler Flyer you uh you went into uh University of Nebraska Omaha to play a D1 hockey so can you explain a little bit of like the D1 process of like how you got recruited and how it played out for you yeah, so I got recruited um, halfway through my last year, or my like my fourth year, and it came from it came from that showcase, the MJHL showcase that they had. Um, I played, had a pretty good showcase, and then what happened was um, the the Omaha coach, or actually it was assistant coach, the assistant coach that was watching those games, he just contacted my coach after the showcase so I didn't actually talk to him at the showcase it was just a communication to my head coach and then so when I got back I guess the following week or something then my coach just let me know like hey 
he watched you play this weekend. He was interested in stuff like he might be giving you a call or like kind of like that. And then eventually he did give me a call, kind of talked a bit, just said, I guess said what he liked and whatnot. And then following up, he came to watch some other games during the year, maybe a month after he came and watched two more games. And then again, just more phone calls and stuff. And then eventually that assistant coach scouting reaction um, plays a role with in their head coach as well. And then they have those conversations. So then they'll talk about it, whatever come up if they want to have an offer for me or not. So eventually that's what happened. The, uh, the head coach ended up calling me and then they just gave me an offer pretty much said what they had for a scholarship and then kind of let me decide if, for a week or so, I think, if I wanted to take that offer or not. And then, um, yeah, so obviously I took that offer from them. Uh, yeah, that was kind of how the, the process went for me and then headed over there the next following year. Yeah, so going into college hockey, like, what was, like, the transition, like, going from, like, juniors, like, junior A to playing NCAA Division One hockey? It was it was a lot faster. Um, I think that the it's not as hard probably as you could expect. I feel like there would be um, like you're gonna adapt to it no matter what. I think as a hockey player, you get a lot of different situations, and there's a lot of like really fast games at junior, and there's a lot of slower games at college. Like it's it's still like it's not like every single game is gonna be the hardest game you've ever played, but the overall speed of it is a lot different and the skill level and stuff. But I think that you're practicing in division one for so long and you do so many like scrimmages, inner squad games and just team like systems practices where you're breaking out against pressure and all this stuff that those pre skates before the season, your first year like sets you up so well for what your um, the actual games will be like and what it's going to feel like. So you have a lot of time to just adapt to the change of the league instead of just getting thrown into one game. Like if I would have just got, if the season just started September 1st and I was only in Omaha for two weeks beforehand, like that would be very difficult to yeah. just play that first game. Cause I'm still in junior a mindset at that point, but after being there in July and then being there, August practicing in September all as a team the first game doesn't really feel like it's such a slower transition that the first game doesn't feel like overwhelming so yeah yeah that's always good when you get like that like transition period where you you don't get thrown right into stuff you like go out, go there like a month before two months before and just practice with the team and just get used yeah. to everything going on yeah in, uh, yeah in new school makes it makes a big difference for sure yeah, it does. So uh, going into your freshman year, like you played seven games. So like, what was it like playing uh, college hockey? And like, what was like your vibe right from the start? It was a lot of fun. It was like just a fun, serious, it was really serious, but just a fun and like vibe. It's like, like winning a game is so fun in college. Like winning a game in junior is fun, but like winning a game in college is like so much fun because the crowds are way more into it. Like you, everyone's just so much more jacked up from it because it's, it's a big deal. Like every game matters so much. So it, yeah, it's just, it's a lot of fun, especially when you're a part of it. Like, even though I played seven games, I still, um, my best memory from college hockey was in one of those seven games. And it's when we, when we got to beat UND at UND and everyone was like, it was the best experience ever because everyone was so pumped and such a big win to get on the road and those things just, you just don't really forget those kind of things. Yeah. So UND has a pretty rowdy uh, student section. So does, uh, did University of Nebraska have a rowdy uh, student section? We had a good, we had like a pretty good student section, not as, uh, definitely not as good as UND's was. There was, our, even Western Michigan's was even crazier than UND's probably, but 
ours was ours was good like we had we had fans there and they they had their like rituals and whatnot and i think i think it was like our overall fan base not necessarily just the student section that was good in omaha it was kind of like everybody because when we uh every game that we score our first goal the the one guy the one fan would always bring a fish into the rink and he'd throw it on the ice and then after after it was on the ice and a guy with a, like a mini zamboni go-kart thing we would just rip on the ice and he'd take his net and then he'd pick up pick up the fish and they they would do that every single time on our first goal of the game so that was just a good um unique trend- tradition that that the fans did in Omaha which is awesome yeah just that's those awesome. things just kind of like make the kind of make the crowd and just make everything feel like home there yeah it just makes the college hockey experience even better and yeah exactly especially it gets gets you guys going gets the boys going gets everyone yeah. going in the crowd yeah yeah, yeah so uh, you only played seven games so like obviously like as a player you want to play like every game but like what do you do to like keep working and like did you like work especially work hard in practice since you didn't play so many like how do you uh how do you like practice and like how what was your mindset like um yeah I guess it would have been different if uh if my mindset was probably different going in I I knew that I wasn't gonna play a lot not like it's like I I guess I didn't know for sure but with being the only defenseman a freshman defenseman I was the only freshman defenseman followed by eight other guys that were older than me I didn't really have I understood that hey I'm probably not going to play 20 some games this year like it's just probably not going to happen unless I like just would light it up or something but so my mindset was like I understood it was going to be a grind I understood that I'd have to practice really well to get in the lineup and that I might be sitting out and stuff so the so it wasn't uh it wasn't like I was just upset about it. Um, and I just knew that I had to have so much other time to work on those little skills like in practice. And on the weekends when the guys would play, I would we uh, the scratches would go on the ice. We'd do a lot of, like, good drills, skill stuff, play some three-on-three. Three. We'd still be playing hockey. Like, it'd still be a lot of fun and stuff. It's just different than not playing every game. So... I also yeah. got, yeah, I also sprained my ankle too halfway through the year. Um, I mean, that set me back as well. So it was kind of just not the best, like, I guess, first year to kick off the college career. But, yeah. Yeah, but at least you had some, you had the older guys to look up to as, as defensemen. And, like, I'm yeah. sure they made that, like, that transition better and, like, helped you really get into – your groove your sophomore year because you ended up playing 26 games your sophomore yeah. year. like how was sophomore year for you because it seemed like you uh found your groove and continued on the grind and got your opportunity yeah no it was it was really it was good um I didn't actually play a whole lot of those games in the first half but when the second half came I played I think every single game which was really fun because it, you really got to feel what it was like to just be in the groove there. Like you're not, because when you don't play and you get scratched, you play one weekend and then you're not playing for 14 days until, because you're going to miss a weekend and then you have to wait all week for, mm-hmm. so that's when you can really kind of like get out of the groove of what it feels like to play hockey. So when I played it, got to play every game and it was just back to back to back. It was always just, you're in on a roll and you just kind of got, got the mindset of just playing hockey and it was it was fun to be a part of that and I can see how being scratched and being on and off in the lineup out of the lineup um can take a take a toll on just like mentally because it puts a lot of pressure on you when you are scratched and then the next weekend you have to go back in the lineup and it's like hey I gotta play well now but I haven't played in 14 days and there's a lot of pressure to make something happen on the ice and yet you don't even really feel like you're in the game shape or the game mode because you missed the previous weekend and it's just a it's a tough I guess um what I want to call it just a tough situation to be in and yeah so 
I, I loved it when I got to be in the lineup every weekend. Yeah, so how important is the grind for you? Because you had to grind through a lot. So, like, the grind must be really important to you. So, like, how important was that to you? Like, you mean um, grinding in the off season or just overall? Just overall, yeah. Yeah, I think it. the grind is – everyone's going to have to do that at some point in their hockey career. And it's the guys that have the good mindsets and the good mental um, mentality – those are the guys that are really going to come out of it with something. Um, if you're always just going to be negative and pouting or like upset about something, then that's when other guys are going to get affected. People see that and it's just not something you want or it's not someone that you want to be around, whether if you're not playing and then it's always the guy that's upset about it. Like no one likes that guy or no one wants to have that guy in the room as much as the guy that, just as always working and grinding even when things aren't going their way so that's just something I always try to keep in mind is just being the same person or the best version of yourself even though things aren't going your way as well as you'd like them so I just think it's about your attitude whether whether what's happening no matter what happens um if you get cut if you get scratched if whatever this and that it's just about your attitude and how you react to those situations because everything can be a positive if you really try to make it one. Yeah. And you, even if you're scratched, like you're wor still working hard and it still makes everyone yeah. better. It's like, yeah, exactly. If you're working hard, it makes the next guy work hard and then it's a, uh, goes upward from there. Yeah. Coaches notice those things too. If you get scratched and then you just decide not to do something or if you get scratched and decide, hey, I'm going to spend an hour now on the ice trying to get better. And then the coach will definitely, they'll notice that. Yeah, for sure. So uh, then this prior season, you transferred to University of Wisconsin-Superior. So, like, what was the transfer process like? It was kind of annoying because you got to do all this paperwork and stuff and figure out what kind of classes you can take and what transfers over. And you're just pretty much getting used to a whole new school and how things kind of operate. So, that was not fun obviously and then the yeah the the hockey stuff was that was a little bit easier I mean the coach kind of took care of a lot of stuff for me so that was really helpful and then yeah luckily my my major they still had the same major of kinesiology or exercise science in Omaha and in Superior so that that transition part made it a bit but still kind of a pain yeah so uh, once again you got you got an opportunity to play as a lot of games like were you expected to did you expect to play a lot of games when you transferred or was it just like a game by game situation no I, I did expect to get to play a lot when I did transfer just by what the coach had told me on the phone call when I was um still in Omaha looking for a place to play like we talked on the phone a lot and he he told me what was going to be up for me and what what I needed to do if I if I came to Superior so he let me know that I would be a big part of the team and stuff and that I um I would get to uh contribute a lot and play a lot so I kind of I expected to handle a big role yeah so how was your first year of at UW Superior it was fun it was kind of what I, ex I expected I guess I had played with a few guys from in Winkler that I played with Winkler at three of them I think yeah three played on Superior already so I knew like a bunch of the bunch of the team and some very good friends on that team so that's uh like that helped a lot with just what I expected because they told me everything like what what it was gonna be what it was gonna be like and how good we would be kind of thing and there was so there's high expectations and we we're supposed to be a good team we we're supposed to win a lot and we had a decent amount of amount of wins so kind of what I like what I had hoped for I wanted to be on a winning team this for my junior year for once um and so luckily then it was it was kind of ended up to be like that but the some of the games I guess were some of the games were easier than I expected 
and then some of the games were harder than I expected, I guess you could say. So, yeah. Yeah, and so uh, this year was like one crazy year with all with COVID coming down. Like, were you guys affected at all? And like, if so, like, what was like what was everything like leading up to it, especially like in the school as well? Our uh, our season wasn't affected by it because we were still we were still out at that point. Um, the school stuff obviously was. We uh, we had to leave right away, and we had to go go back to I had to go back to Canada and everyone else had to go home so it was pretty abrupt because you had this like fun summer planned and I mean spring semester at school like hanging out with the guys you're just working out and skating and getting your classes done and stuff and it's always like fun time in the spring and then all of a sudden it just you just say you have to go home right away I mean I expected to I expected to go back to Superior too but the I obviously didn't. So I left all my stuff there because I thought I could come back in like two weeks and then everything, it started getting worse and worse and worse every, every month. Right. So yeah, yeah I haven't been back there since March now. And, but I'm super excited to just go back and see all the guys and stuff and continue all that, all those relationships and kind of where we left off in spring. Yeah. It was definitely a weird situation. Cause I also run cross country and track at, okay. at school and like, once NCAA canceled, NBA canceled, NHL, like all that, it just yeah. went downhill from there. Then my hockey leagues canceled, and then yeah, like you're out of like doing nothing the rest of the the rest of the semester yeah. until yeah. like June. So it it was weird. Hopefully, we don't experience anything like this again. But oh, I sure hope not. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it definitely makes yeah. you learn a lot more about yourself, though, and like the people yeah. around you. Yeah, definitely does. Yeah. Yeah, so I have a few more questions for you. So, uh, yeah. what what do you see as the biggest difference in like some differences and similarities of Division One and Division Three hockey since you played at both levels? Yeah, um, I I could go back to just the points I made in the one video because I made a video on it too, and I did have to think a lot before I before I just made this video because it was hard to really like pinpoint some exact differences. And I texted a few guys that had also played at both these levels. And I just kind of got some other opinions. And I think they really hit it, like, hit it exactly with what I was thinking, too. And some of those differences were, like, the, um, the game just kind of flows better in Division One, And it kind of goes back to the systems of it. I think systems are preached a lot more. And they're more strictly um, executed than at Division Three. So that just helps, like that contributes to the speed of the game and it just makes everything go cleaner and smoother. Like just the passes were on the tape more, little things like that, a couple more like more like the skill plays. It was probably harder to defend. And um, yeah, I guess another difference besides just the, uh, the system spark goes was uh, – I wouldn't say like the skill because there's a lot of skill guys and there's a lot of like super fast skaters too in D3. But I think the intensity level of maybe how hard everyone is going 100% of the time is a little different. At times the game can be like pretty like dull and slow, I guess, where maybe guys aren't even skating as hard as they normally like they should be maybe. And I think in Division One, it was it was just more intense, intense, intense the whole way through, kind of no matter what. So the depth, I guess, of the teams, thinking of it now too, the depth of the teams, there wasn't too many teams where you just know, yeah, we're going to win this game tonight. Like, there's no way we should lose. Like, you go in thinking, like, yeah, like we can't lose this game. Like, we shouldn't lose, but it's like, if we don't play our best and we don't play like our absolute best, there's definitely a possibility of losing. Whereas in sometimes in D3, there was teams where even if you had like a pretty off night, you could probably get away with the win because we were a pretty good team. And, and it was almost, there were some games that were just like, you definitely have to win these. Like there's no way that we should lose those games. So that part that just the depth and the drop off of teams that was a bit different and the similarities 
Um, I mean, it's both the hockey, both of the hockey can be really good. Like at points, like when we're playing top teams in D3, it feels pretty much exactly like a D1 game. Like it's just as fast and stuff. So there's a lot of guys too, like in practice, there's a ton of guys on my team that are super skilled and it's like, oh, they should probably be playing D1. Like I've seen, I've played with more skilled guys in D3 than I did in D1. So it's like, why didn't they go D1 versus back and forth kind of thing? But um, it was just, it's kind of your opportunity. You can play a role in it and your grades. And there's just some guys just end up getting snubbed, I guess, from D1. So that, yeah, you're going to see some good players at both levels for, for sure. Yeah, I always hear about people saying, like, Division one hockey is better than D3, but honestly, they're pretty similar. And, like, yeah, some of the top D3 teams can definitely – compete with with some of the d1 teams so yeah it's definitely yeah. uh definitely yeah. some good hockey yeah it's yeah it can definitely be similar in some areas like the the top of d3 and the lower end of d1 like that they could essentially like blend over a little bit yeah yeah exactly and so you're you're a trainer too so like what do you see in players that make them so successful and like what are some like overall tips for getting to that next level Oh man. Um, I think that there's a lot of different things that you do see when you see like a really successful player. There's some guys that just are like, they just have it like as at an athletic standpoint, like they're just strong. They're fast. Like every, they just got the whole package there off the ice. And it's like, yeah, like that's like, you can see it because that's why they're a good player on the ice too. And then there's, like, guys who are, like, they're even not that good in the gym and not necessarily, necessarily, like, the best athlete in the gym. But yet they still just, like, dominate on the ice. So there, there could be, like, a mix and match sometimes of things and how it can carry over. But overall, like, the guys that are working hard in the gym and are the better athletes usually get re- represented as, like, better players on the ice. So... I think that when kids are in their younger years and they're trying to make it um, to division one and you want to set yourself up as best you can, you have to just make sure that you're training hard and you're just trying to make yourself pretty much the best, best athlete as you can, because that will just increase your chances of being able to play at those higher levels and, you won't have to rely on necessarily your skill as much if you're the fastest um, or the strongest player, because that will just like sometimes can cover up areas that are a little weaker on other points. Yeah. You said it perfectly there. I couldn't have said it better than that. So uh, Lawson, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate your time and this is a blast. And if uh, there's ever fans allowed back in uh, arenas, I'll be sure to hit up. University of Wisconsin Superior. That'd be awesome. Where are you from? Uh, outside of Chicago. Oh yeah. So it wouldn't even be too bad for you to come there. Yeah, I'll I'll definitely yeah, that, come. That'd be awesome. Okay, sweet. Well, yeah. Thanks for having me on. A lot of fun. Yeah, no problem. Well, uh, have a nice rest of your day and uh, good luck uh, during the season. Yeah. Thank you, man.